1990 called, they want their aunt back. Check this out, this is uh, <laughs> this is interesting. This is the DuPont ZR1000.2. It has this cool plexiglass top to show off the guts. It looks kind of like an old school class AB amplifier. Based on the model name, it should be a thousand watt amplifier. It even says 1000W here on the front of the amp. If it can do anywhere near that much power, this is the best bang for the buck on Amazon. But the box says 1000 watts of peak power, and that's a red flag. Peak is another word for Max Power, AKA bullshit. Let's hook this amp up and find out the real number. And we'll get to that after we check out all of the connections and controls. On this side of the amp here, we have a bunch of screw terminals for a power, ground, remote, and of course the speaker. Everything is clearly labeled. It is a two channel amp and you can bridge it. The Amazon description calls it a three way amp. I don't know what they mean by that. There are a pair of 30 amps fuses installed. And of course they threw in a pair of extra fuses. So that's 60 amps of fusing, which in theory should be a enough to get us up to maybe 600 watts. Keep watching to find out if it does. On the other side of the amp, we have an adjustable crossover that can be set to low pass, high pass, or off. There is a gain control and two pairs of RCA plugs, a pair of inputs and a pair of outputs. There's also an on off switch for your bass boost. So let's hook it up and see how much power it makes. Normally I like to oversize my wire for these tests, but I can't fit a four gauge fork terminal onto these little screw terminals. So we're gonna go with eight gauge wire. Eight gauge wire is not big enough to support a thousand watts. It's barely big enough to support 600. So why would DuPont give us such small terminals on a 1000 watt max power amp? I think we all know why. The answer is in the manual. According to the manual, this is not a thousand watts. It's 100 by two at four ohm stereo and 300 watts bridged. If you're tired of these misleading numbers stamped all over the outside of the box, head over to maxpoweraudio.com and pick up a t-shirt with a catchy slogan making fun of fake numbers. That's Max with two X's. All of the proceeds from the sale of those shirts are gonna be used to help me purchase and test these sketchy amplifiers. So if you wanna help me sniff out the BS, pick up a shirt today. One cool thing I noticed when I was hooking up the amp, this amp has these interesting little rubber grommets on the mounting feet. I've never seen that on an amplifier before and I kind of like that. That's a nice touch. More amplifiers should include that. And hey, check it out. When you power it on, the amp logo lights up. Again, that's a nice touch, but those nice touches don't matter if it can't make power. All right, we got it all hooked up in stereo mode. Gonna be going into a four ohm low. This thing is rated 100 watts per channel into four ohms. Both channels are loaded down, so this should give us a good representation of the four ohm power. We're watching for the red light right here, and we get 99 watts at 1% total harmonic distortion. Turning it up a bit more, we clip immediately again at 99 watts. Thanks again to all my patrons for their generous support. Because of the generous support of my patrons, I've been able to add a DC clamp meter and a voltmeter to my setup. That way I can give you a rough idea of the efficiency. Looks to be around 59% efficient, which is typical for a class AB amplifier. And hey, the dyno result is close enough to the 100 watts in the manual that we can say it does meet the specs in the manual. But the power isn't always the most important thing. There's something else I wanna show you after the dyno tests. So keep watching, you don't wanna miss it. If you wanted to use this amplifier with a subwoofer, you can bridge the amp to get some more power. So we're gonna play a 40 Hertz test tone into a four ohm load to simulate a subwoofer. And we get 315 watts at 1% total harmonic distortion and 322 watts at clipping. Our efficiency number is again somewhere around 60%. So this amp has no trouble hitting the power numbers listed in the manual. But we're still a long way from the 600 watts of max power listed on Amazon much less a thousand watts. How about if we try out two ohm stereo? And I'm a little bit worried about this test because the manual says nothing about this amp being two ohm stable in stereo. It should be because it's four ohm stable in mono, it should be two ohm stable stereo. Well, let's find out. 
We get 144 watts at 1% THD and also at clipping with an efficiency of about 57%. But out in the real world, you don't play test tones through resistors. You hook things up to subwoofers. Let's hook it up to a subwoofer and see how it does on what's known as a reactive load as opposed to a resistive load. This subwoofer is wired to four ohms, but as you can see, we have quite a bit of box rise. So we're not going to get the full power on this particular subwoofer. That's perfectly normal. It's not a problem with the amp. It's not a problem with the sub or the enclosure. This enclosure was designed for music, not test tones. Let's try it out on some music. As you can see, we get more power. Notice also that the impedance is lower. When you're playing music, you very rarely ever get all the power out of your amplifier. So what we're seeing here is perfectly normal. But power is not the most important thing. There's one more thing really important that I wanna show you. But first, let's summarize where we are. The amp does have some pros. The biggest pro is that it is cheap and it will actually do its rated power listed in the manual. It also works with a four ohm load. So this is great for an entry level 4 ohm subwoofer. It's got a decent set of features such as a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and output RCAs. It has a unique and interesting look. I'm sure you could visualize a wall of these running all the way across your trunk all of them lit up to show off the logo. And there are some cons, such as the absurd power claims on the outside of the box. It is an unknown brand. I've heard of DuPont before. DuPont's a big chemical company. The size is also a con. It is huge. A modern Class D amplifier that puts out more power is probably half the size. And of course, it has that Class AB efficiency, so not. <laughs> <laughs> very efficient. And then there's that unique look and styling, which is also a con. I find this amp to be a little bit dated. It doesn't really appeal to me, but I'm sure some people like the look. If this were 1990, this would be a pretty cool amplifier, but that is not the end of the story. It turns out that this amp has a major issue. When I first powered it on, it emitted an audible high-pitched whine, and that whine did nothing but get louder during testing. Let me show you. Just a quick warning, if you've got headphones on or something like that, you might wanna turn the volume down a little bit. This could be an unpleasant sound. It's not at all uncommon for an amp to let out a high frequency whine. A lot of Class D amps are going to do that right at clipping. These Kenwoods right here that I ran for a few years in my truck whined, but they whined when the gain was cranked all the way up and we had distortion or clipping. This guy right here started whining almost as soon as I started playing the 1000 Hertz tone. And I'm not an amp technician. I don't know. Maybe that whining was just a side effect of playing test tones, but I've never had an amp whine like this. My job is to just give you an honest report of what I see and what I hear when I do the testing. And you can do whatever you want with that information. Maybe you should consider one of the amplifiers in this playlist right here. Hey, before I go, I want to say thank you to all of my patrons, especially $25 patrons, Bo, Dylan, Fargo, JD America, David, and Baba. I'm Justin. This is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.